Merchandise Center. Sounds like auto sequence has started.
35 second test and the RS-25 engine has concluded. That certainly was exciting. You could actually feel the power from it. Gary, I'm curious, what's happening right now immediately following the test? And ultimately, what do you have to do to get ready for that next test? Well, wow, there are probably a few people in the control center high fiving because that was <laughs> a very, very successful test. And you got to see an awesome display of the power. And, and can you imagine four of those RS-25s all going at the same time? Uh, but yeah, so uh, what will happen right now is uh, the engine will go into some post-test shutdown mode. Um, and we'll do some securing of the facility systems. We'll evacuate the propellants out and get the stand in a safe condition. And then shortly thereafter, we'll dispatch some engineers and technicians out there to do final inspections of the test stand. And uh, tonight, the engine engineers will go out there and do some inspections on the engines. We'll turn on some drying purges and let those purges run overnight and get the get the engine all dried out after test. Um, and another thing is people will start looking at the data. You know, we've got, like I said, all those hundreds of measurements. So engineers will be pouring over the data from today's test to look and see if all the objectives were met. And that's the part you guys really like. That's right. <laughs> Lots of plots and graphs and numbers for the engineers to, to look at. And um, usually what happens is a couple of days later, we'll have a full-blown formal data review, and we'll talk about the objectives and start planning the next test. If we didn't meet an objective into this, today's test, we can roll it over into the next test. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the process that we go through there. Yeah. Well, your engineers and technicians certainly did a great job today. It was a great show. We're going to go back out to NASA Ed to get a reaction from the crowd out there. It looked like a whole lot of steam. <laughs> I tell you what, Kim, uh, I'm speechless right now because, uh, you know, we've seen shuttle launches. Uh, we've seen uh, launches at Vandenberg from Kennedy, from Wallops. I tell you what, this is unlike anything I've seen before. And, and you know, Kim, to me, the most amazing thing is, is most of the time when you see a launch, the uh, spacecraft is moving away from you. And here you feel like you feel the impact sustained. And, and that must be what it's like for the astronauts. And I know because of my wife and other intellectual deficiencies, I'll never be an astronaut. Not, but this is as close as you can come to feeling what they feel on a launch. It's pretty impressive. It was just sheer raw power for eight and a half minutes. I mean, just to see all that steam coming out and, and the crowds with the excitement taking video and, and pictures, and they're all fighting for jockeying positions yeah. to get that ultimate picture. My chest cavity was kind of rumbling. <laughs> it, it was unbelievable. Absolutely. And, and Franklin, over there in the A2 test stand, I can only imagine what it was like from your end. Yeah, it was a beautiful sight, guys. The, the, the power, you, as you said, you could feel it. Uh, from all the way over here, and you were just a little bit closer than we were, so I know you could definitely, definitely feel it. And uh, after the test was over, I um, actually was over here viewing it with uh, Walt Janowski from Airjet Rocketdyne. He smiled, and he was happy with the results, so uh, I assume it was a very successful uh, test. Guys, back to you. Now, Franklin, because joining us now is Steve Wofford, who is the SLS Engines Manager. And Steve... Where are the initial results? Initial results are great. We ran full duration, 535 seconds. We met our test objectives, didn't note any anomalies at this time, so now we get the fun part of going through the data. That's, that's awesome. I tell you, and you can feel the excitement here with the crowd. And, I, I mean, already here, you feel instant victory. You know, it's total success. But tell us, you get the data. How long before you actually know that the data, with, with the data that you get that the test has been a success? Okay, so we know that the test has been pretty successful right now. So we had one of our primary test objectives today was to demonstrate the four-and-a-half-minute chill cycle on the fuel side, which is a flight-like condition for SLS. We hit that we made that so i'm really really happy about that it's a very much shorter chill cycle than we had in shuttles so we knew the engine could do it but we demonstrated it today yep. so the other test objectives we know we were successful we spend a week going through the data to make sure there's no other anomalies that we've 